Politico Politica. Politics for everyone. Welcome back to Politico Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinshe. It's now time for our Project Ogun segment, where our guest will be sharing his big plans for his state if he's given the mandate. So how will you rate the state of affairs in Ogun State now? I know you already alluded to it in um, our first segment where you said there was a hollowness in Ijebu Igbo, but now Ogun State in general. Ijebu Igbo, I mean, uh, uh, exists within the context of Ogun State. And whatever you see in Ijewibo, you know, you will see in Ayetoro, you will see in Ilaro, uh, you will see in Ilado, you will see in uh, Ogere, you would see in Shagamo. It's, it's everywhere, you know, and it's uh, what it speaks to is that you can see that people are toiling economically. You know, they become so economically defenseless right, that even, you know, their political decisions are made with considerations for things as basic as food, you know, and you can, you, 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 you can tell that uh, it, it, it's, it's become extremely important that people like you and I then step forward in the defense of our people, you know, and, uh, and, and I consider this a test of our humanity. You know, we can't just look away anymore. You know, people are really in poverty I, I thought I knew what the state of affairs, you know, you know, was, uh, but um, uh, since I engaged uh, this process, uh, March 2018, to, I have seen poverty, you know, stare at me in the face everywhere that I've, you know, been to, and uh, and that's that's why this this has become, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an extremely important mandate for me. Yeah. So even before putting yourself up to this task of running for the office of governor, um, what are you already doing to address some of the issues in your own personal capacity in Ogun State? So I've been a very private person. Um, I have enjoyed the successes that God's blessed me with, uh, with uh, the people that are close to me. I have shared my, my uh, economic influence uh, or resources with the people that are close to me, family members extended and, you know, uh, closer, um, friends as well, and friends of friends. And, you know, once I hear about it, I'm happy to fix it. And I don't, I, I, I don't want to be known for it. You know, I don't like to put a signpost to whatever good I do. You know, my Bible teaches me that whatever my right hand is doing, my left should not even know about it. You know, so those are the things that I've done. And when people ask me, what have you done? I say, those are not stories for me to tell. Those are stories for those who have benefited from me to tell. You know, but I, I would tell you that I've, you know, often run into people who would say thank you for something that I did and Lord knows I do not remember. You know, but I just say you're welcome anyways, you know, so, and, and but you see that that's subsistence engagement. You know, um, how, how much can I do with my little resources? Uh, the, the important thing is that we get to a place in governance where we, you know, use government money, public funds to solve public problems, right, rather than a few you know, her, uh, harnessing the resources of the state and then giving the little back to the people. Let's take the money that belongs to the people to serve the people. That's so, where you can, uh, you know, achieve mass uh, em em uh, empowerment. So if given the mandate, what areas will you focus on? I know poverty alleviation, just by our discussion, will, will come up, but beyond poverty alleviation, or how will you tackle poverty? Thank you. I thought we weren't going to go there. Because poverty alleviation is big grammar. You know, a lot of people say it. We will, we, we, you know, tackle poverty. What, what are you going to do, right? Um, Ogun State has 74% of its land, you know, as arable, which means we can farm productively, you know, on 74% of our land. And um, uh, the agenda is to invest heavily in uh, agriculture in Ogun State, yield optimization, mechanization, seed sourcing, uh, farming techniques, you know, uh, bring back the agri extension you know, programs where uh, government workers will go train uh, farmers in remote areas, you know, how to farm and what techniques to use. And we'll do this in partnership with a, a few multilateral organizations that are set up to do things like that. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, what that then does is, 
you, because the agenda for that is to turn Ogun State into the food basket of the Southwest region. So what that does is you then help with mechanization, where it's currently subsistence. You help with seed sourcing, where you know uh, yield optimization is required. So the same piece of land that used to give you say five tons of you know uh, maize, will then give you 25 tons because you're planting the right seeds and then you're using the right techniques, and then you're also using mechanization for farming. That what the, the the resultant effect of that is where mechanization is available, you then release the children from the farm so that they can go to school, right? Uh, and then we set up the agri-exchange you know, uh, uh, system, and, and, and it was always there. It used to be called uh, agri-cooperatives that government set up so that we, they, you know, they would buy produce of all farmers. So it's a short offtake. Once you can assure offtake, right, the farmer is more energized to you know, do more, knowing full well that whatever produce it is they cultivate you know, will be sold. But that's not the only thing that happens. Because you can draw a direct line between you know, cultivation and cash, even the youth will now engage it. And we'll roll that out with the OIA program that we're you know, going to deploy. OIA stands for Ogun Youth in Agriculture. You know, and then we encourage the young people as well to you know, engage farming, you know, whether it's fish farming or uh, poultry or snails or uh, cultivation you know, and all of that. So there's a huge line of program in that regard. And once you begin to do that, I mean, Yoruba land, we say, that is, when you take feeding or food uh, or hunger, when you take hunger out of poverty, whatever is left of poverty is very little, you know, it's marginal, right? So once we turn the state into the food basket of the region, and then we, you know, we have a, a lot more people engaging you know, uh, farming or agriculture, what you find is that food becomes more accessible and more affordable. And once people can afford to eat and nutrition begins to improve and vitality becomes the order of the day, you raise life expectancy, you, and then through investment in you know, our healthcare system, you reduce child mortality at birth or any form of mortality whatsoever at birth, you know, and that way you have a more vibrant population. And because of that vitality, productivity improves. And when productivity improves, that's a function of revenue. Right? So productivity drives revenue. And then, you know, we industrialize the state along the lines of our natural resources. And natural resources, we have many, right? We have pulp paper, you know, for paper production. We have uh, limestone for cement manufacturing. We have tar sands and bitumen in the ground. We, we don't have any, you know, uh, uh, bitumen refinery. Uh, we have rocks for, you know, rock formations across the state for granite and gravel. You know, we have a forest reserve. We have elephants in Ogun State. And with Rwanda making $400 million, of, you know, out, uh, off of uh, guerrilla tourism. I don't see why we can't make a whole lot more the same, you know, through elephant, you know, tourism and, you know, whatever okay. wildlife we have. I never knew they had elephants in uh, Mogun State. I immediately think of Olumara when it comes to um, tourism. But let's look at education and yes. healthcare. These are key issues. And as you said, there's all a really direct um, relationship between the vibrancy, the life expectancy, when you take care of things like health and education, what will you be doing? Well, so when you look at education and health, they need almost the same thing, you know, with regards to, you know, uh, intervention. They need a uh, renewal or, uh, you know, absolute revamping of infrastructure of delivery. So if it's, the, you know, infrastructure of learning on the education side or in infrastructure of healthcare delivery on the healthcare side, right? And then uh, after infrastructure for education, then you go to tools of learning, right? Um, things like multimedia, internet. I mean, I don't see why our public schools cannot have internet. There is absolutely no excuse for it. You know, our revenue may not be so huge, but if you sto if we stole it less, it, we, 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 you know, we can do a whole lot more with it, right? Um, and then on the healthcare side as well, there's also tools of you know delivering you know the healthcare itself. And then back to the education side, it's human capital, and the same on the healthcare side. And what do I mean by human capital? On the education side, we need to retrain our teachers. We need to you know bring back the days of you know rigorous training for teachers because we recognise that your students cannot they are as good as the quality of the teachers and not just the teachers the school administrators as well and then we must make sure that they're well, pay, well paid and paid on time and the same thing on the other side you know of health care right we need to ensure that the doctors are well trained they're retrained and the nurses and other health workers and that they're well paid and paid on time as well you know so and on the education side we need to influence curricula we need to ensure that we, we, we don't continue to train you know our pupils for the past 
we must train them for the future. There are jobs that will become irrelevant in another ten, you know, 10 okay. years. We need to stop training our people for that. And the fourth le you know, uh, uh, leg on the healthcare side is consumables and policies that govern the establishment and um, standards monitoring of private healthcare system and even public you know, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as well. And then what I mean by consumables in that regard is how we source consumables in healthcare. You know, uh, we need to begin to engage directly with manufacturers of drugs you know, and other forms of medication so that two things happen. One, we take out the risk of you know, fake drugs in circulation, and then two, we drive down the price. Okay. My final question will be, if for whatever reason you don't get the mandate, but you have all these ideas, will you be willing to work with the government? I'll be willing to do as God leads me. Thank you, Demola, and so good luck on hearing from God again for the next steps. Thank you. We'll be going on a quick break on Political Politica, but when the show returns, it's our lighthearted segment, the quick fire segment. Do stay with us. <laughs> 